It is a blessing to see everyone this morning. We want to welcome you to Quaker Gap Baptist Church for uh, this time of worship today, special time of worship with our uh, adult choir and worship band. And I hope the Lord uses this time to just inspire you during this season. Uh, Today, I want to welcome you if you are a guest with us for the first time. We do have a tear-off section in our bulletin. If you wouldn't mind filling that out and dropping it into one of our offering boxes, we'd love to know that you are with us and get to know who you are. Also, if you have a prayer request, you can write that on the bottom of that same slip of paper, uh, just so uh, we will be able to pray for these needs throughout the week. And uh, we're grateful for uh, the opportunity to pray for whatever it is that may be on your heart. So please write that down, drop it in the uh, offering box as well. Uh, The reason they closed this section a little bit today is so that the choir is going to be over here and you may not be able to see them if you're too far out. So I think y'all are safe right there. You're good. But uh, the choir is going to be here in this corner, just so you know. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody can see uh, what's happening this morning. So there are some announcements today. If you have a bulletin, I want to uh, just direct your attention to the center portion there and let you know about some things that are happening. First of all, remind our men that we have men's breakfast Bible study at PB Clark's Tuesday at 6 a.m. There is no deacons meeting. That was last week. No deacons meeting this week. Uh, Wednesday, no meals, services, or activities. Make you aware that you don't need to be here Wednesday night. (coughs) However, Friday evening, we will meet at 6 o'clock for a Good Friday fellowship meal in the fellowship hall. And there is a tear-off section in your bulletin right here on this green sheet. If you would like to participate in that, just let us know how many will be in your party, and all the information is right there. Or you could call uh, the church office by noon tomorrow. And that uh, fellowship meal will be followed by our Good Friday service at 7 p.m. And then next Sunday at about 6.56, that is sunrise, we will have an Easter sunrise service back in the picnic shelter. Uh, That will be followed by our youth-sponsored breakfast in the fellowship hall. Also, our prayer group will meet at 9.15, Sunday school at 9.30, and our Easter worship service at 10.30. That's our schedule for this week. And I hope you'll take advantage of all these opportunities and be a part of what's happening here at Quaker Gap. We're continuing to collect the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. There are some special envelopes up here. Some of them may be in your pew. Uh, These are going toward North American Mission Board and uh, planting of new churches uh, all over our country, especially in places where there are no churches. Uh, And we uh, hope that uh, you could give to that as well. Just drop that in the offering box in one of those envelopes. Just a couple of uh, announcements. If you signed up for Easter breakfast donations, you need to drop that off perhaps Friday night uh, at the Good Friday service. Uh, If you haven't signed up, then there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer of the fellowship hall, and uh, we'd love for you to bring uh, some food donations for our youth-sponsored Easter morning fellowship breakfast. Uh, there are a couple of other things I just need to draw to your attention. One, I was uh, told that the, this is a time of year when uh, we like to dress up the uh, cemetery. So just want to remind you of some of the cemetery rules, and this uh, is important for those who care for the cemetery, especially those our landscapers. Uh, just make sure that you put flowers in the permanent vases or the containers that are on the marker. Uh, if you had potted plants, wreaths, or seasonal arrangements, those are permitted on holidays and special occasions. However, they must be removed within four days or they will disappear. So uh, make sure you get those within four days uh, after Easter Sunday. And when you remove them, make sure that if there aren't are any anchoring materials like, you know, wires or something like that in the ground that you get those as well because they can be dangerous for uh, the landscaping equipment. Um, And it is the family's responsibility to remove burial flowers within seven days of burial. So those are our cemetery rules. I just draw those to your attention because this is the time of the year when we like to dress up uh, our cemetery. One other thing for the women warriors, all ladies are invited to join our women warriors group this coming Thursday, April 6th at 6.30 p.m. at the home of Beth James. They will continue their study on women of the Bible by discussing the Hebrew midwives. The leadership team will provide hamburgers and hot dogs with all the fixings to enjoy. Bring a friend and come join them. So that is this Thursday at the home of Beth James at 6.30 p.m. I think that does it for all of our announcements today. Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, we welcome your presence today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would just open our hearts to worship. Father, that uh, as the choir sings and as we sing together, Lord, I pray that uh, the words would have meaning to us. Father, that our minds and our hearts would be connected to you in such a way, O oh Lord, that uh, we could just give to you our praise and you would receive it gladly. So, Father, use this hour now to glorify yourself and to be blessed. And, uh, Father, to work through us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's sing together 161, Crown Him with Many Crowns. together from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 5 where this musical is actually taken from. It's built on this verse and I read just a portion of it. According to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Many times through the service this morning there will be words up on the screen and if you know the music I invite you to join with us in singing them. If you're not familiar with it, I pray that the music and words would be a blessing to you. And I'm going to start us off with just a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. Father, I'm so grateful that through the weeks and the days that have come pre preceded this moment right now, Father, that great work has been put in. And I'm grateful for 
each musician and the talents that they bring, the sacrifices of praise that they make. Father, I pray right now that you would take us out of it and that you would be present. Father, I pray that the words would be a blessing. And Father, that the hope that we sing about, this living hope, that it would be made real, and not only through the words that we sing and the music that is heard, but Father, through the hope that is in our hearts. We give you praise, and we lift it all up to you in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have this hope as an anchor for our souls, firm and secure. It is the certainty that what God has done for us in the past guarantees our place in what God will do in the future. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh
existence. And in the right time, his word took on flesh and became one of us as Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man. For 33 years, he walked the earth. He was tempted. He was tested. He laughed. He cried. He loved the unlovable and touched the unclean. He gave sight to the blind, caused the lame to walk, and raised the dead to life. Then, like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jesus was led away to be hung on a cross at a place called Calvary. He was humiliated. He was mocked. He was abused. And then he died and was buried in a borrowed tomb. He was the blood sacrifice that was required of man to be right with God. He paid our debt so that we can be freed from the curse of our own sin. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree.
body lay in the grave while his followers hid, afraid, heartbroken. Their minds could not understand why he had left them so soon. He was so young and so beautiful. But on the third day, his body, dead and buried, came alive. Death had lost its power. Death was swallowed up in victory. Angels stationed outside his empty tomb announced the news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Living hope. It is by this that we are saved. This hope is not wishful thinking or fleeting dreams. It is a reality that we accept by faith. It is the proof that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God will never leave us or abandon us. He picks us up when we fall. He covers us in the shadow of his wings. He carries us when we are too weak to carry on. 
He is with us through the death of a loved one. He is there through the loss of a job. He is there when the doctors say there is no hope. He is there until we draw our last breath. And he is there to welcome us into eternity with him. Though heaven and earth pass away, we need not fear, for he is there, our living hope.
thank you so much. That was such uh, a great time together this morning, and you all sang right along with us, so I praise God for you as well. But uh, let me say some thank yous before I say anything further. I just wanted to say thank you to, of course, to James Bird, our music minister, for the time, effort, hours he put into this. So he's done a wonderful job in, in accompanying and leading at the same time. So uh, he's learning new skills every time, and new skills. Also, uh, thank you to our worship band for Chris Dodson and Parker McKinney and Tyler Van Meter and Paul Pugh, and also to Ellen McKinney, our narrator, and our sound engineers back there, Mark Smith and well, Chris Dodson was also doing some work on the uh, tablet over here, as well as Scott Hinson for putting the lyrics up here for us. And Annette, Annette is uh, running our recorder for us. So we've got a whole team of crack sound engineers. So yes. And of course the adult choir for the part that they played in it as well. And so uh, thank you. So thank you for everyone who has been participating in this from uh, start to finish and to all of you as well for singing. And uh, as we prepared for singing this one word kept impressing itself upon me, and that word kept popping up in my mind, that word cornerstone, cornerstone. And one of those songs says, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. For some reason, that line has been kind of echoing within my heart and my mind throughout this time. You know, after the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter was emboldened by the Holy Spirit, and he was able to stand up and preach to thousands. And then he was called before the Sanhedrin, which was a group of Jewish religious leaders who were very serious about this new upstart sect of Christians. And in order to defend his faith, Peter stood before the Sanhedrin, and he boldly proclaimed his faith before those men. Imagine yourself, how your knees would shake if you were called to stand up before some religious leaders who didn't want anything more than to have you put away. Well, as he got up and spoke, he said these words, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Imagine proclaiming those words in mixed company. You know, we get, we get out here uh, in our church service and we can say words like that. Yeah, salvation is in no other name. But what happens when you're out there in the world before others who may not agree? Of course, this ruffled the feathers of the Sanhedrin. They were not happy with it because they knew what it meant. But they had a problem, see. They knew that Jesus had literally been raised from the dead. And they knew that, that Peter had miraculously healed a man by the temple gate, and many had seen it with their own eyes. There's nothing they could say. There's nothing they could do. There's another reason why the Sanhedrin was ruffled about this. They understood what these words mean. First, there's the prophetic meaning of these words, because buried in one of David's songs that he wrote, Psalm 118, are found these words, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And then Isaiah referred to the cornerstone when he prophesied, so this is what the sovereign Lord says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious stone cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. So Jesus also, during his time in this world, referred to these verses. And it's recorded for us in three of the gospel accounts. He called himself the chief cornerstone. He pulls David's psalm, Isaiah's prophecy together, and he says, I am the cornerstone. And then, of course, he was rejected. And Peter was there to see it all. Jesus is the cornerstone of prophecy, rejected by the leaders of Israel, cursed, beaten, crucified. 
But what exactly is a cornerstone? Well, in every stone building, there is one stone that is crucial. It is the stone that is laid first. And it is laid perfectly to ensure that the building is square and stable. It is the rock upon which the weight of the entire structure depends. It rests on that one corner stone. And Jesus is that stone. The church is built on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for us. And there is salvation in no other name on earth or in heaven than the name of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Now, when life seems wobbly, that happens at times. When things become uncertain in your world, when your faith wavers and your hope begins to shake, check your cornerstone. What is it that that you rest on? Where is, is your hope? Where is the weight of your life and the weight of your burdens resting today? There is only one cornerstone that can hold the weight of your cares and the cares of the whole world. And that cornerstone is Jesus. So trust in him, worship him, walk with him, live your life for him, and he will be there at the end to receive you. He is the cornerstone of earth and heaven. He will be your solid rock. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you this morning for the truth, so many truths that have been sung and that we have worshiped to today. But at the center of all is our Savior Jesus, your Son. We worship him today. We're grateful, O Lord, for all that he has done for us. As we reflect this week on Jesus' entry into Jerusalem to palm branches being waved and coats being laid at the feet of his donkey, people shouting, Hosanna in the highest. And as we reflect this week on on the hours he spent in the temple and inside the walls of Jerusalem proclaiming the truth, and, and as we reflect this week on his arrest after the Last Supper, as we reflect this week on his beating and his crucifixion and on his burial, And as we have opportunity to reflect next Sunday on his glorious resurrection, Father, I pray that you would center our lives and our hopes in Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, for it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, now take our praise, take our worship. Father, I pray that you would be pleased and satisfied, but Father, that it wouldn't stop here, that we would live our lives as a praise song to you. In Jesus' name, amen.